In the last video, we learned about the uh, about how to use the static lifetime here. Uh, it didn't work for this uh, this example here because we uh, we said to uh, Rust that uh, you know in this city struct we are going to give it uh, we're going to give it a name which is a stir and it's going to be uh, you know static so it will live for the whole program and that worked when we just said uh, you know name equals uh, right there you know something like Ichinomiya, name of a city and that worked but uh, it didn't work when we had some strings which you know don't live long enough and we tried to uh, reference them so let's go back to the uh, the original error <clears throat> and then see uh, see what it wants us to do and uh, so there we go so we took out the uh, the lifetime parameter and it's just a regular stir and it says must uh, live for the whole program blah 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 and here it says uh, consider introducing a named lifetime parameter so this means you can give it any name you want and it says uh, please do it here and please do it here so let's uh, let's ignore it and say you know I only want to do it here and see what it says because it's uh, it's interesting to see uh, you know what makes the compiler mad and uh, and why and so you can see uh, so here we said we have a struct city and this struct city has something to do with uh, or it has a, a lifetime of a and then uh, we're giving it a name and uh, we're not saying how long it's going to live so that's why uh, <clears throat> that's why it's uh, you know not not happy with that so let's uh, let's ignore that and uh, let's say hey we're going to give you name and name has a lifetime of a <clears throat> and what happens here is it says uh, well you didn't even declare it so we are just saying lifetime a but uh, you declare them uh, you know at the top of a uh, uh, like in the beginning of a function or the be beginning of a struct, you have to say, okay, Rust, there's a, a struct called city and uh, it has a lifetime and we're going to call it A and that's going to have to do with uh, some sort of something inside it that is a reference. And, uh, and here is uh, something called name and this is the thing that lives at least as long as this A that we just told you about and then it can put two and two together and say okay you're only going to give me uh, a name something called name that uh, you know lives at least as long as city so now I'm uh, I'm happy with that and you can see that uh, you know now it works and uh, you might notice that this is really similar to generics which we saw many videos ago and here is a uh, you know a quick example of that you know you have uh, here we just called it uh, A, and uh, here we have something called uh, prints, and we say, hey, it has this, uh, you see we have the same angle brackets. We're saying, okay, inside this function, we're going to have something called T, and we don't know what it is, but it's going to have a trait called display, and uh, here as well, we're saying, okay, there's a thing called A. And, uh, you know, if we take out this uh, trait to make it even more simple, we can just say, you know, let's, uh, Let's return a T. So there you go. And uh, input. So that is, uh, you know, super generic. And, uh, you know, that's enough for us to, uh, to figure out that, uh, you know, it can take something in and it can return it. And in the same way, we can also, um, you know, how uh, you can actually name it anything you want. Uh, you don't have to call it a T. You can call it a thing call it a thing and the same is with lifetime so maybe uh, you know you want to make your your code uh, really readable because later on you know let's say for example you have this uh, this complicated struct and there are a bunch of things and there are references and there are different lifetimes and so one has an A one has a B one has a C and you start out by uh, by saying okay this is a struct with uh, you know, a bunch of lifetimes, I'm going to give them these names, and, uh, you know, maybe the, the human reading it is, uh, maybe they can figure it out, but maybe, uh, you know, maybe you want to make it a little bit easier. So you can say, I'm calling this city lifetime. And then you can say name is a, you know, some it's a stir with the uh, lifetime that I'm calling city lifetime. Uh, maybe this one has to do with, uh, you know, countries. Uh, maybe this one has to do with... Uh, I don't know, profit, whatever you want. So you give them a bunch of lifetimes, uh, give it a bunch of names, um, and that can make it readable. But uh, usually, 
you're going to see just this uh, this A like that. And so knowing that, let's go back to the uh, this first function that we saw when we first uh, took a look at lifetime. So let's get rid of that. And you'll remember we had this, uh, you know, this let my string. We tried to uh, return a string. This will never work, no matter what, uh, no matter what you do with lifetimes. And we saw that uh, if you just return something with a with a static reference, that'll always work. Uh, but uh, let's say you have uh, an input, a stir, and then uh, you know, let's say I want to take in. Uh, this uh, this input and uh, return uh, a stir and uh, let's see if uh, if Rust is happy with that and it actually is and this is because um, uh, Rust has has certain rules where um, where it can uh, it can figure out the lifetime and if there's one input parameter uh, then it uh, it's only going to give uh, give it one lifetime so on the uh, on the inside uh, it's going to actually treat it like that so it's going to say okay there's uh there's something coming in with a lifetime of a i'm going to uh you know uh it's it's one uh one variable is coming in and uh that gets that lifetime and then uh, the return also gets that lifetime so we're going to uh look at those rules uh in the next video but uh the uh the takeaway for this one i guess will be that uh you know, uh, for simple functions, this is why you don't see uh, a lifetime uh, lifetimes actually written because Rust can figure out a lot of it itself. And for uh, for other times, uh, sometimes uh, the first rule of thumb is to put a bunch of A's everywhere. Put put an A there, put an A there, and Rust will usually be happy with it. So um, if your struct is simple enough, so uh, if you don't want to stress about lifetimes yet, you can just uh, Follow the compiler. Put some A's in there. You know, learn, read that, read about them a little bit, uh, and then you can, uh, you know, get more and more comfortable and start uh, maybe having more fun. But to get your code to work in the beginning, you can just uh, follow the instructions there, and uh, then you don't have to stress very much about it.